So, we will uh, look at uh, in detail about the plug ratio I explained in the previous uh, slide. So, in the, there are two images I showed over here and uh, this is the cross sectional image and this is the, uh, the top view or uh, the, the after the cross, uh, cross tension test. So, if you look at in this case, if you, look, you see that you know we have a Neville nugget that formed somewhere over here and this fail, in this failure mode, Will nugget diameter is intact. Okay, so will nugget, uh, its entire nugget is intact uh, to the plate. That means that your plug size is the same as will nugget diameter. Okay, so then, uh, so this is the most acceptable, acceptable uh, failure mode uh, because your failure has happened not in the well zone but at the heat affected zone. Uh, compared to this, and if you look at an, uh, the failure mode over here in the in the left side of uh, the slide. And in this case, the crack actually propagated in some distance towards the, uh, the well center line and along the uh, middle of uh, the, uh, the prior, uh, prior phase interface and then it, it, it cracked um, in the well nugget. So that means that you see here uh, the, the, the plug diameter is decreased consider, uh, compared to this case and here uh, the, uh, uh, the initial well the nugget was here and you have a crack towards the uh, center of the weld and then uh, the, your the remaining weld area is reduced significantly. And uh, so, this kind of failure mode what we call it as a partial plug failure. Okay, so, this is pull plug failure. And by calculating the, the size of the plug, we can also calculate the plug ratio, right. So, plug ratio is the plug size after testing over your initial well nugget diameter, okay. So, so in these two cases, you can say so your plug ratio will be higher in this case and your plug ratio will be lower in this case. Right. So, we will move to the, the third uh, uh, testing methodology to uh, we use it to identify the, uh, this, uh, the spot welding uh, the uh, characteristics uh, is the tensile uh, the, uh, the L tensile test uh, testing. So, instead of using the cross tension test uh, because the, the sample preparation the geometry measuring uh, uh, of this test is a bit complex. So, we may also use an a modified geometry where we have an, an L shaped uh, the uh, samples are spot welded the typical dimensions are the 55 mm uh, in length and 20 mm in, uh, in this direction and 30 mm in, uh, in the width, width direction and we do one uh, spot weld at the center of this uh, the, uh, the sheet and then apply a tensile stress along this axis and uh, again we identify the, the, the load required to uh, have a failure um, plus uh, uh, a plug ratio because uh, uh, the load required to uh, uh, cause a failure it is also a function of uh, the deformation that is happening in the adjoining regions. So, it is uh, by itself uh, may not give you the, uh, the actual properties of the weld. So, we also use the plug ratio to identify the actual uh, the characteristic of the, of the, the weld which you make. So, uh, by combining by looking at uh, the values of the shear strength or shear load to cause a failure plus the plug ratio, we both would give uh, the acceptable um, welding uh, characteristics. Uh, so, uh, so, this is very simple to carry out. So, it is actually preferred in uh, various uh, industries. Uh, in, a, in a tensile uh, shear uh, test in the, the L configuration. Uh, so, we will identify the strength the uh, required or uh, load required to pull uh, the two plates apart after the spot welding and the plug ratio and uh, the boat combined would give you the characteristics the mechanical properties of the, the welds uh, uh, we make in the, the sheets. So, in this graph show in a, such an uh, experiments, 
so we what we see over here is the Develanger diameter as a function of tensile shear stress uh, for uh, uh, three different thicknesses. So, um, so for a thickness of 1.27 mm, 1.91 mm and 2.54 mm sheet thickness. Uh, we can identify the tensile shear stress if you look at it you know, because of uh, 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 the sheet thicknesses uh, the acceptable di di diameter also decreases obviously we looked at a relationship right generally it is 4 uh, square root of thickness. Uh, so we will identify uh, then tensile shear force required to uh, cause a failure of the uh, uh, joint and we will get such a graphs with varying thicknesses or varying compositions. And apart uh, along with this graph, we will also look at uh, the plug ratio. Uh, if uh, for example, in this case all this failure uh, case, if a plug ratio is 1 and uh, yeah, this is an ideal case you may say and uh, uh, we, if a plug ratio is acceptable, so generally it is about 80 percent or 0 0.8 if that is the value. So then uh, yeah, it is also an acceptable based on the guidelines uh, what we use. So this I already explained how we calculate the plug ratio uh, in uh, full plug failure or partial plug failure. So we measured the nugget diameter uh, uh, before uh, 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 test the uh, cross tension tens, uh, tensile test or uh, the L shaped she tensile shear test and upon failure we identify the plug size and take a ratio uh, that will give you the plug ratio. So we will move on to the what are the typical problems you may have. Uh, in a resistance spot welding. As I already explained, the process window uh, of resistance spot weld uh, can change significantly even a small change in composition. Uh, uh, because uh, if you look at the weld growth curves I had explained, if you change the carbon concentration and you also change the resistivity of the material and if you change the surface chemistry or if you change the, the coating characteristics, if you move from galvanizing to a galvanized material for example or in an electroplated material and you will also change the contact resistance okay, because you change the surface morphology of the, uh, 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 of the, uh, the, the coating you use. So that will also lead to change in the res uh, contact resistance and if you change that then obviously you will also change your well growth curves. Uh, so, for a, 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 even given uh, thicknesses, given surface chemi con and the chemistry and the material composition, you need to generate uh, uh, this process window, you know, the well growth curves I will explain. Uh, so, if you change an, even a small composition or, or a thickness change from 1 to 1.1 1 .1 mm or 1.2 mm, again uh, these curves will change. So, that is a, a, a big problem in resistance spot welding to identify uh, a process window where you can get uh, a stable. Uh, uh, the, the uh, stable uh, uh, well metal properties. Uh, so the other uh, typical problem is faced in uh, industry is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the electrode life. So especially if you are welding in a galvanized sheet in most of the automotive steels they are all uh, galvanized uh, zinc coated and then uh, your zinc diffuse into the electrode which is copper and then copper and zinc and uh, you will form brass. Okay, so, so the moment you form uh, the, uh, the uh, the brass layer, uh, you also change uh, the R2, the, the, the resistance between the uh, interface of the electrode and your material and uh, because of that you, know, you also change your well uh, uh, characteristics. Okay? Um, you, 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 you may see in real life for example if you are doing an assay about 1000 wells a day. Uh, over a period of uh, time in a day, uh, the well nugget size may increase significantly uh, because you also increase the resistance by forming uh, the brass uh, layer uh, uh, on the electrode tape and you need to either machine off the electrode, if you machine off the electrode you also change the electrode diameter then you will also change the well nugget uh, well size. So the electrode life is in a big problem, there are a lot of research. Uh, went in to improve the electrode life for example using an, uh, an a carbon layer uh, or uh, some sort of an, uh, an extra uh, material in between the electrode and the, uh, and the sheet. But it still is a huge problem uh, in the electrode life you need to be monitoring uh, if you do not do that I mean your, the well nugget size can change over uh, uh, a period of time uh, with the number of wells uh, you make. Um, and then the third is a poor pit of, of the pot. I already explained you know if you do not consider the minimum distances required uh, for uh, uh, 
the overlap configurations, uh, the L uh, or even the distance between two wells and those are all you know uh, you should be taking care of uh, to get uh, the, the ideal stiffness. So, the, the stiffness analysis um, uh, is, is extremely critical to identify the, the location at which you need to do a spot wells. Um, and the fourth one is the access problems that is again. So, uh, uh, because uh, of the nature of the process we need to have uh, two electrodes uh, reaching uh, at the same spot of your uh, uh, component. Um, if that is not possible and then uh, you cannot uh, make a spot well. So, your design uh, criteria uh, uh, the design of a component should also in such a way that you know you have uh, a clear access to the uh, two electrodes uh, at a given uh, location where you want to make a spot wells. Uh, and you may also have an, uh, problems like electrode skidding you know, uh, if you have an excessive load or if you have an uh, uh, misalignment in terms of uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the electrode uh, uh, placement. And uh, the, there are some inherited problems uh, uh, during uh, resistance spot welding of aluminum alloys uh, because we all know that you know uh, uh, the aluminum has a very low electrical resistance. Uh, so, we need a very high welding current because of the, the oxide layers uh, what we have uh, uh, in aluminum alloys and the, the aluminum also exhibit a very uh, a narrow plastic range between the softening and melting. So, uh, even if you change a small amount of uh, current you may also end up uh, expulsion end up in expulsion uh, and the oxide film what you have in, uh, in aluminum uh, sheets uh, it should be always machined off and uh, but it is very difficult to remove the oxide layers. Um, and uh, the, the all the aluminum alloys are also uh, uh, and, uh, most of the aluminum alloys used in automotive industries um, all aluminum alloys and they also have uh, an uh, issue in uh, uh, during solidification uh, uh, in, in terms of hard cracking. So, the, the electrode force what you apply uh, it also aids the, the cracking. So, you may end up uh, having an hard cracking uh, uh, during uh, 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 welding. So, the careful control of electrode force is also very important. So, uh, due to these uh, problems uh, the aluminum alloys are all uh, considered uh, uh, not suitable for resistance spot welding. So, there are some uh, other typical problems you may face, if you, may face uh, if you have a dissimilar uh, uh, materials uh, either in composition or in thicknesses okay. and the problems can be uh, case to case and based on the, uh, the, the composition of the material you use. Uh, so, the, for example, I put uh, three cases here A, B, C okay. In case A we have a, a material, two materials. So, uh, the bottom one is the thicker than the top one and if uh, the, the uh, uh, both of them are made from same compositions okay. The composition is the same. So, uh, uh, the bottom material, bottom sheet has a uh, large thickness than the, the top. Okay. And if this material has a very high electrical or thermal conductivity, okay, what will happen? We have a on the bottom sheet which is high thickness can conduct the heat much more effectively than the top sheet okay, because of the mass effect and you may end up forming the weld only at the, the top sheets. Okay. And if the, uh, the condition is reverse, if a material has a low thermal conductivity, okay, and you use the same uh, 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 material in both top and bottom sheets if, if that material has a very low thermal conductivity and you will end up containing the heat only at the uh, thicker uh, uh, sections. So, you end up making a weld only at uh, the, the uh, bottom uh, sheet okay. And if you have a, even a same thicknesses and upper weld has a uh, high thermal conductivity and bottom has a low thermal conductivity then obviously, a low thermal conducted material would contain the heat it will end up forming wells only at the, at the bottom. Okay. And uh, we can overcome this problem uh, in, in various ways. So, one of the most common ways of overcoming the problem is uh, um, say increasing the contact area of the one of the electrodes. Okay. For example, uh, if you see that uh, the material is welding in one area only in one uh, um, sheet and you can increase the contact area. In the other in the other sheets, so that you, know, you may form a uniform well size, or you can also have uh, a material with uh, thermally low conductive. Uh, instead of using a pure copper, you can also use a copper alloy, uh, where you uh, decrease the thermal conductivity. Okay, so that you know we can also form uh, wells in 
in uh, both regions. Okay. So the the most common uh, problem, other than these, uh, uh, in uh, well welding in their dissimilar thicknesses, is the the brittle wells what we generate, especially if you have uh, um, high alloying uh, compositions. Uh, all of our advanced sites and steels, uh, they have uh, um, um, higher amount of alloying element than the conventional uh, steels. And uh, the cooling rates what you use, uh, what you uh, obtain in the resistance part welding uh, as I already explained can go as high as 1000 Kelvin per second. So, invariably you will end up uh, having a, a magnetic microstructure and apart from that because of uh, your uh, the uh, columnar uh, grain uh, development or uh, grain growth uh, during solidification uh, can also lead to a very severe segregation at the well center line. Okay. So, both uh, the brittle microstructure and the segregation uh, um, arising from the, um, uh, the, the columnar grain uh, 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 solidification. So, your uh, well metal uh, develops uh, uh, very brittle uh, uh, characteristics. So, for example, uh, if you look at uh, uh, this graph I showed you the uh, sample this year strength after uh, uh, in uh, cross tension tension shears test this graph is actually plotted from CTS or you can also get it from uh, tensile shear strength, so no problem. So, uh, if you have an, uh, a low base metal strength obviously you may have an, uh, a low alloying element and a simple uh, chemistry and you will end up getting a very good uh, well metal properties with a full plug failure. So, plug ratio becomes 1 in this case and if you increase the strength that means that you are going moving towards in a slightly higher alloying elements. Uh, in in uh, advanced size and seals obviously if you have an uh, strength level uh, ranging from 600,000 amp Pascal and you may also uh, cause a severe uh, um, uh, segregation because of the increased amount of alloying elements which are needed. For example, in trip steel uh, you, you may also add phosphorus. Uh, uh, the role of phosphorus I already explained in previous classes. Uh, so, that may cause a segregation at the solidifying grind boundaries as well as the well center line and uh, well center line unfortunately in resistance spot wells it always happens uh, at the middle of uh, the uh, prior uh, faying interface. So, that is the, the uh, most brittle region in the resistance spot well. So, when you apply an uh, tensile stress uh, your uh, the interface completely breaks apart causing an uh, uh, interface failure what you show over here so that means that plug ratio becomes 0. And uh, based on your segregation behavior so you may also have a partial plug failure. Uh, and uh, these brittle uh, wells that are actually you know commonly observed in um, advanced ice and seals generally is not accepted. Therefore, we need to come up with an uh, alternative well thermal cycles for resistance spot welding that is what you are going to look at in, uh, in subsequent classes. Okay. And, uh, and this kind of uh, uh, the, the brittle uh, the, uh, the weld issues are, are perennial in advanced ice and steels. Uh, because of uh, the alloying elements uh, that are present uh, in the, the composition. So, there are some uh, typical problems, uh, the couple of them I will explain now. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the other uh, problem we need to actually you know, address while designing uh, the, your, uh, the uh, your weld uh, configuration. Uh, so, I already explained the minimum distance between uh, two wells right, the yes. Okay, that is very critical because if you are placing the wells too close to each other and you may also have a, a shunt effect. Okay. The shunt effect, uh, so, so what is actually, so it is very clear the electrons uh, know basically when you are passing a current obviously you have a moment of electrons between one electrode and other electrode. Uh, the electrons obviously find an easy way to go from one electrode to other electrode and if you are placing the wells, two wells close to each other. then you will end up uh, uh, passing the current from the, the wells which you made already uh, to the, the other electrode and causing uh, 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 reheating the, the wells you already made. So, your uh, the, the wells which have already been made uh, is used to pass the electrons from one electrode to the electrode. In this process the wells which you already made it is also reheated and sometimes you may also have remolten in the case. Um, and this happens especially if you place the two wells very close to each other. If you are not taking care of the, the S I already explained in a previous slide, uh, the distance between two uh, wells. 
leading to uh, the uh, um, change in the microstructure or the properties of the wells which have already been made. So, the other uh, problem especially if you use uh, DC direct current uh, uh, for welding um, is the, the Peltier effect. So, Peltier effect, so this is a Peltier the French scientist name um, and it is an opposite to Seebeck effect. Seebeck effect you must have already been heard on the, the principle behind uh, thermocouples, uh, temperature measurement systems. What is Seebeck effect? So, when you have a dissimilar junction and uh, these two dis dissimilar junctions are kept at uh, two different temperatures, you have an EMF generator. And Peltier effect is uh, opposite to that. So, when you have uh, uh, DC current and EMF and pass through uh, two different uh, junctions um, and you have uh, uh, hot and cold junctions. Okay? So, for example, in this case you have an uh, example aluminum, aluminum welded with the copper electrodes. So, in this case uh, you if you pass an EMF or if you pass on a current, so what will happen you will always have uh, a hot and hot and cold junctions. Okay? So, and exactly opposite to uh, Seebeck effect, and Seebeck effect because of uh, different in temperatures you generate EMF and here uh, because of uh, an, uh, a dissimilar junction. Uh, you generate uh, hot and cold uh, junctions and due to that you will never get uh, uh, the uniform uh, uh, nugget formation. So, you always have a problem with uh, uh, and hot and cold junctions leading to an uh, irregular shape of well nuggets and well nuggets forming in only one end which is in hot end and uh, well nugget is absent on the other end. So, that is the reason uh, uh, the, the direct current is not really uh, used for welding a uh, wrist and spot welding and if you use a direct current you need to also make sure that you have a sort of a pulsing, you change the polarity uh, during welding uh, in such a way that you know you get about uh, uh, you, uh, the uh, problem of uh, hot and co cold junction generation. Uh, this is really uh, happening uh, 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 more predominant in terms of dissimilar welding then you will have even more uh, 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 dissimilar uh, junctions lead to uh, hot and cold junction formation. Uh, and due to this when you have a uh, uh, much rapid electrode erosion uh, happening and uh, because of uh, the hot and cold junction at the, the electrode to the sheet plates. So, we will summarize uh, again uh, in this class. Uh, so, we uh, uh, looked at uh, uh, the mechanical properties of the weld, uh, the plug ratios and we moved on to the uh, the various problems that are associated with the resistant spot wells, the problems due to the dissimilar thicknesses, uh, problem due to dissimilar materials, uh, how we can overcome and we will also move on to the, uh, um, the, uh, the design aspects, uh, uh, what is the minimum distance between uh, two electrodes, what we need to keep so that we can avoid the shunt effect and we will move on to the, the, uh, the use of uh, direct current why it, uh, it should be avoided in, if, if possible while uh, uh, welding uh, in uh, uh, of uh, dissimilar materials or even even similar materials if you use it is advisable to use an, uh, um, an uh, uh, alternative current uh, due to the, the Peltier effect. Thank you.